Hey everyone, I thought I go to the spot where the culprit is and that is on the Oregon coastline. We're talking about a underwater volcano and I've reported about this guy quite a few times but there's new video footage available and there's something happening where the scientists are saying Ooh, it's happening, it could happen any second guys that this massive massive underwater volcano that is as large as a big city could erupt behind me guys that's the thing and that's why i'm here because we need to look into this again and i want to show you the stunning stunning new images from actual seamount and I want to show you some interviews of scientists, what they have to say. So, it's going to get interesting. The opportunity to witness things that almost nobody in the world has ever seen before is, it's a big discovery, right? A monstrosity of a underwater volcano is about to erupt off the Oregon coast and there's new underwater pictures of this giant and I have new information what the researchers are saying. It's absolutely fascinating and it looks like we will have that live on camera. The, lo the volcano is located on a so-called spreading center which is one of the longest spreading centers in the world. We will talk about this, guys. Absolutely fascinating. The name of this volcano that is observed by underwater sea cables that come from the volcano to the Oregon coast in Pacific City. And I have been at location in Pacific City and you really don't realize that something like this is going on there. It's a beautiful area, beautiful coastline, and you would not think that when you stand on the beach, which I have, that such a monstrosity is out there when you look at the Pacific Ocean. It's only 300 miles, that's 480 kilometers off the coast of Oregon, and it's one of the most active submarine volcanoes in the northeastern Pacific Ocean, and it has known eruptions 1998, 2011, and 2015, and it hasn't erupted in 10 years, but it shows all the signs of an eruption, land rise, gas emissions, and earthquake swarms. So the scientists have studied the volcano's past behavior. And so especially the USGS has learned that actual has effusive lava flows, similar to what we see in Hawaii at Kilauea, but just underwater. So it doesn't erupt like, for example, Mount St. Helens in 1980. And this thing is a giant. It's 4,600 feet, that's 1,400 meters below the ocean's surface. And if you compare this for scale, the tallest building in the United States, the One World Trade Center in New York City is 1,776 feet, that's 541 meters. More than double that building. So actual is two and a half times that height below the surface of the sea a monstrosity. All the past eruptions, we have not seen them. There is no videos. But now we know it's getting ready to erupt, so that's why the University of Washington is keeping a close eye on that volcano with world-class system of sensors. And guys, this is highly interesting. Do you know what these sensors captured? when we had this mega thrust earthquake in Kamchatka. That is amazing. July 30th, 2025 mega thrust 8.8 .8 earthquake in Kamchatka. That was sending a tsunami all across the Pacific and it has triggered alerts at actual seamount, but not only that tsunami. In Kamchatka, that's on the other side of the Pacific Ocean, but soon afterwards, at the measuring stations at Actual, they could see the ground motion from the earthquake show up on the tilt meter sensors of Actual Seamount's 
that's thousands and thousands of miles away. You see the picture here, you see July 30th, you see the curve trigger. And then just before midnight local time in Oregon, this is when the tsunami waves from this earthquake started passing over actual seamount. And they were measured by the bottom pressure recorders on the seafloor that they have for actual. So you can see this in this graph. They have triggered automated alerts. These alerts are in place to notify the researchers when an eruption might be starting at actual. But of course, in this case, these large pressure changes that were caused by that Kamchatka tsunami, um, when the waves were passing by, there were large pressure changes. If we had an eruption, the seafloor would rapidly subside. So at the far right of this picture, you see like six and a half hours after the earthquake, you see the tsunami waves arriving. And this is also a chart here that shows the ground uplift. It's roughly 11.5 centimeters per year. It's inflating. It's like you have a balloon underneath the surface and you blow it up with air. Then the ground lifts up and this is filling up with magma. That's why we see that. So this is a world-class system of sensors and the scientists will have a front row seat when this monstrosity of an underwater volcano will erupt. It's a very different volcano. It's not like the Cascade volcanoes, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Baker, Mount Hood, all these volcanoes, Mount Adams. No, this is underwater. Although it's very active, but if there wasn't any monitoring systems down there, no one would even know what's going on. Versus if Mount Rainier or any others have unrest, oh yeah, we see that and we're very worried. So the significance for the researchers of this volcano is very, very high. I mentioned the spreading center, one of the longest spreading centers in the world, part of the longest mountain chain on earth. And these spreading centers, they wrap around the earth. That's what the scientists are saying. They look like the seam of a baseball on our planet. There's always underwater eruptions on Earth. Actually, 70% of the volcanism on Earth occurs underwater. Get that, guys. Did you know that? But in most of them, almost all of them, there is no monitoring systems there. And a lot of them are very far offshore. So we don't know when they're erupting. But you've maybe seen my video that I made about Santorini right now, about the underwater volcano Colombo that is only four miles away from Santorini. And now this new study confirms that escalating crisis in February it was the volcano. It was magma. But now the two volcanoes are connected. That's not good. So check out the video on the end screen, guys. Mind blowing. I want to say groundbreaking, but I hope the ground doesn't break uh, there. But with actual, they will know when it is erupting because they have this regional cabled array there with lots of intro instruments. And basically it's on top of the volcano everywhere, live streaming, live streaming to shore continuously. It's a completely new view and anybody in the world can access it. Scientists say we get to have a seed, a presence in the oceans 24 seven, and we can watch the whole kind of lifespan of the volcano. So what is new? They thought that it's going to happen this year and we're kind of overdue if we compare it to the other eruptions because they occurred near spring, near the springtime. So is this now erupting or not? That's the big question. So the volcano's earthquakes and the way how it's, deform it's deforming, the scientists say it's directly linked to lunar tides. And those are changing during the spring. So now I'm raising the question, do we have to wait till spring or is it overdue since spring? So for now, we hear it's overdue. We remember from 2015, um, about two months before it erupted, they were over 
2,000 earthquakes a day at actual, like small earthquakes, lots of tremors. So they're estimating that they will see that kind of behavior again when it erupts next time. So they think that they will see a very strong indication, but they can't give us an exact time frame because these earthquakes can start all over a sudden. Scientists say, well, similar to earthquakes on land or other volcanic eruptions on land, you know when things are getting exciting, well, or when they are escalating, but you don't know the exact time. But since this thing has erupted previously, maybe we have a little bit of a better time frame, like they have in Hawaii and in Iceland. Great news, most likely they say no threat to humans. But what does that mean for underwater life? Does it then impact what's going on underneath us? There's so much pressure from the water above the volcano that it won't affect us on land. And for some reason, if that erupts underwater, it can promote life in the ocean. The scientists are saying that this is a phenomenal ecosystem. It's one of the most extreme environments on Earth. And that volcano has underwater hot springs that actually support life. The animals there don't use sunlight, obviously, as it's so deep down, but they use gases that are coming off of the volcano. So it's incredibly exotic down there, an incredibly dense ecosystem down there. And what is crazy, some of these organisms, guys, they live at, at, at temperatures of over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is what they like. They hate oxygen, but they like lots of metals that they're getting from the volcano. So you could say that they have quite a robust community down there at Actual. And they're able to respond very quickly should there be some changes. Because after the eruption in 2015, there was one ecosystem that was then all of a sudden completely covered with lava. And then scientists checked that area three months later and it was already vibrant with new animals. So amazing nature the wonders of nature. Small animals, they said, but many of them go through larval stages, so they come back very, very quickly. So it doesn't look like this is doing any harm. And scientists say the 2011, that was the most exciting thing that they have ever seen. They say they were, they were driving over these collapsed lava lakes, like basically lava lakes, uh, that you see like in Hawaii. But the difference when they looked at actual, they said the water was near freezing and it forms a glassy surface. And then the whole lake all of a sudden collapses. And then there were billions and billions of microbes streaming out to the seafloor. And they call them snow blowers. And they say when these byproducts of these snow, snow blowers were streaming out, it was one of the most beautiful things that they have ever seen. And this only happens right after an eruption. That's the only time you can see that. So with the cameras that they have down there, hopefully we will be able to see it. They think maybe if you see that ahead of time, it might be a precursor, but they don't know enough about that yet. And for the researchers, this is an incredibly novel thing. It could be that it's very common in oceans, but again, they've never been there at the right time. So this time, a unique, unique chance, guys. I will stay on the pulse of this for you. Check out the videos in the end screen if you want to learn more. Crazy things are going on in Campi Flegre. We just had a magnitude 3.3, but also Santorini, guys. I think you should subscribe and binge watch all my videos. Then we can spend more time together. If you want to fill me up with coffee and that fly, <laughs> if you want to fill me up with coffee to keep me going, check the link in the description. It's greatly appreciated, guys. Thank you, members, for joining and thank you for your supers. Thank you for your comments. Great community, guys. See you soon. Bye.